This video is about cell transport. Uh, in, in the last video on cell transport, we talked a little bit about how things go in and out of the cell through proteins. The problem is, some things are too big to go in or out of the cell through a protein. In that case, it ends up going directly through the cell membrane. So we'll take a look at this picture first. Uh, there's two different types of transport through the membrane that you need to know. The first one is called endocytosis. The prefix endo tells us that we have things coming into the cell. So this is the cell picking things up from outside. There's three different ways this can happen. There's one style called phagocytosis, then there's penocytosis, and the last one's called receptor-mediated endocytosis. To make it simple, phagocytosis is for very, very large things. Uh, so this is going to be something that's usually bringing in food particles, usually very large stuff that's coming into the cell. So we end up with large molecules here, generally food molecules. Penocytosis is taking in smaller things. I like this part of the diagram because it clarifies something for you. This is the extracellular fluid. This is the space outside the cell. This is the cell membrane. And then this is the cytoplasm. So that means it's inside the cell. So we're going from outside through the membrane then to come inside of the cell. If you look at penocytosis, it's bringing in smaller things. So it's smaller particles, maybe some proteins, things like that. Uh, nothing quite as large as what it's bringing in during phagocytosis. But it's still the same process. What's happening here is the cell membrane basically wraps around whatever it is the cell's trying to take inside. Once that's in there, it's called a vesicle. It's the same thing that the Golgi apparatus is sending out into the cell. All a vesicle is is some kind of product that the cell needs that has a membrane wrapped around the outside of it. It's like a way of sort of transporting things inside of the cell. Uh, the last one, and this is the most technical one, we're not going to, I'm not going to be too concerned about this, but just so you get a full view of it, receptor-mediated endocytosis has little protein receptors on the outside of the membrane. What these are going to do is match up with a certain particle that the cell is looking for. So in this case, you can see the star-shaped ones kind of fit in here, but the little box-shaped ones don't. Which means once these three receptors would fill up, then this area would encase with a cell membrane, so it would sort of become its own little section here. And then eventually we would end up with one of these. We'd end up with a vesicle, which is three of those little star-shaped particles. You know, whatever they're supposed to be, maybe a sugar or something like that, um, inside of the cell. So there's three different ways the cells are bringing things in. Phagocytosis for large things, penocytosis for smaller things, receptor-mediated endocytosis for something specific. The next process we're going to talk about is how the cell gets rid of stuff. As you can probably imagine, the name here is exocytosis. If endocytosis was bringing things in, exocytosis is sending stuff out. So uh, since that one is not on here, I'll sort of write that one down for you. My goodness. Here we go. So we've got our exocytosis set up here. I like this picture because it shows you how this actually works from the Golgi apparatus. The thing that I don't like about it, there's a lot of extra stuff written on here. Are you going to need to know that this little vesicle here contains newly synthesized soluble proteins for constitutive excretion? No. No, you don't. So this kind of stuff I don't want you to worry about when it comes to this picture. Um, all you really need to get is what it's showing you, like what the picture is representing. So let's talk about the stuff on here that we do know. You know about the Golgi apparatus. You know that the Golgi apparatus takes proteins from the ER, and it ends up modifying them, sorting them, packaging them into these little guys called vesicles, and then sending them to locations inside and outside of the cell. That's something we've gone over in class many, many times. Exocytosis is just the process of sending these things outside of the cell. So you can see it ends up sorting things like we talked about in class. It sorts the little blue guys out from the little pink guys. So these are different kinds of proteins. We've got the little pink ones then. They get bundled into their own vesicle. They end up leaving. Remember, all a vesicle is is just part of the membrane. It's part of the plasma membrane, just like on the outside of the cell. 
And uh, what ends up happening, that's going to move to the outside of the cell. When it reaches the cell membrane, it fuses to the cell membrane because it's made out of the same stuff. They're both, they're both uh, made out of phospholipids. Once it fuses to the membrane, it ends up pushing its contents outside of the cell. So to give you some context here, it says this is the plasma membrane. It's the same thing as the cell membrane. Since this is the cytosol, this is inside the cell. Over here is outside the cell. So what we end up doing is sending things out of the cell through exocytosis. It works the exact same way with these little blue guys. Uh, that vesicle goes up, it bonds to the cell membrane, ends up pushing the product out of the cell. To give you an idea of when um, exocytosis happens, all of your nerve cells work this way. So what this is showing you is a nerve cell, an axon is like the middle part of the nerve, and uh, the way it works whenever you send out a nervous impulse, there are vesicles inside your nerve cells that bond to the outside of that nerve, and they release something called neurotransmitters, which are these little guys, which fill this little tiny space that's in between your nerves, and it sends a signal from one nerve cell to the other. Now think about how fast this process happens. If you've ever had to do something athletic, like um, hit a baseball, or you've got to catch something that's falling, that you, know, you just saw, like maybe you knock something off your desk, and you're coordinated enough to catch it before it hits the floor, those are all nervous impulses that allow you to do things like this. So this process happens very, very fast. Um, so this is just an example of like how exocytosis works in your body. You know, why would the cell want to send things outside of it? Well, a process like this. You know, this is how all your nervous signals work. Uh, last thing then is just to go through and compare these two processes. So when it comes to endocytosis, bringing things into the cell, you need to know a few different things. Uh, remember, there's three different types. There's phagocytosis, pinocytosis, and then the receptor-mediated uh, endocytosis. So you should know the three different types for this one. Uh, the other thing that you need to know just in general is this is bringing things inside the cell. So for exocytosis, it's sending things outside the cell. So this is getting rid of vesicles. And then this is uh, taking in a new vesicle. Overall, these processes just have to do with bringing things in or out of the cell. The one thing that they both have in common, I guess I should maybe set this one up so it, like, it covers both of them, they both are dealing with large particles. So things that are too big to go through proteins to go in or out of the cell are involved in these two processes, uh, especially on this side, especially on endocytosis, bringing things into the cell. And that's only really, really big stuff that the cell can't uh, take in through one of those protein channels that we talked about in the last cell transport video. So one more time, the key to this really is the prefixes. Endo, bringing things in. Exo, like exit, sending things out of the cell. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something.